welcome back to our creative video series. Uh, last time we did an iced tea uh, pattern from uh, Villa Rosa Designs. And so this is what it looks like all done up and ready to quilt. So here's one of the problems that you find with uh, larger block quilts. They piece incredibly quickly. And they do really interesting designs nowadays. But then it becomes a case of how do I quilt it? So I just wanted to show you an easy way today uh, of doing some simple, simple ruler work to create a very interesting looking design. We'll flip this around just a little bit so you can see what the design is going to look like. This is done using the ruler were, the ruler template called a pillbox. This is a quarter inch ruler, so all Berninas can do it, all long arms can do it. Um, if you uh, have uh, any machine that does a quarter inch ruler, you can use this ruler on it. So this particular size is the two and a half by six and a half. Just so that you know, uh, there is also a, a slightly smaller size, which is a two by six, and I'll explain why we'd, we would want to do this. I'm going to do an eight point um, setup for my ruler. So let's start out with the marking, and then we'll talk about what to do with the rulers. So the first thing that we need to do is find the ruler and the mar marker. <laughs> Just like your sewing table at home, ladies, everything's covered up that you need. All right, so this block, when we measure it, when it was completed, it came up to 13 and a half inches. And that is quite common with larger quilt blocks. You might have anything from, say, a 12 inch to maybe a 14, 14 and a half inch. It's quite common with the big block quilts. So the first thing I'm going to mark is I'm going to mark uh, a crisscross from corner to corner because we don't need to do any math to do that. All we're going to do is line up our rotary ruler so that we are right uh, at the corner of the block here and the corner of the block here. You'll notice, which is always good when the teacher stuff lines up, that the two black points on my center square also line up. Uh, if they didn't, it would not be a crisis. I would always line up with the outside ones. So we're going to come in and with a chalk marker, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to mark this down. So the chalk marker has the advantage that it gives you quite a bold line so that you can see it, uh, but it has like a little wheel and that little wheel releases loose chalk. So when we're done, we can rub this off. You just take a wet washcloth and just damp wet, wet a damp washcloth and wipe over the top of the surface and it'll take it out. All right, so now we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna flip and we're gonna do the opposite marking. The one thing you want to do when you are doing chalk is I would not mark every single block on my quilt. I would mark like three or four of them, sew those and then come back and remark. Now that gives us our crisscross which is going to help us with our vertical and horizontal line. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to line up my ruler so that the ruler is lined up right at the intersection of my lines there. And I'm going to double check that I'm straight by checking the line on the ruler up against the seam of the block. So now I know that I'm perfectly straight. I'll go ahead and mark that one. And we'll do exactly the same thing going the opposite way. And so we'll line up, we'll check out the seam. Am I lined up straight going across here? It's looking good. And we'll come in and we'll mark that. So easy peasy to do. Um, I am often a cheat. They do make a stencil that you can place on your fabric and you can chalk with a pouncer. But in the case of this, the, the block was actually larger than the stencil. So I went ahead and drew, did the drawing for the four lines. All right, so now what we have to decide 
is what kind of template we're going to do. We know that it's a 13 and a half inch block. So what's great about it is all I have to do for this is the long measurement of our, of our uh, ruler. That is going to be half because we're going to be starting right here in the center. So if I do a six and a half inch length, even my math goes two times six and a half is 13 inches. So it's going to give us about a quarter of an inch to the edge of the block. And that's actually quite nice. I like that where I'm not lining right up uh, onto the seam. So I have just a little bit of space in between the, the rows of stitching. Uh, it means that we don't have to be hyper accurate. A lot of the large block quilts have a 12 inch block when it's finished. And that is why they develop the pillbox that is six inches. So two times six is 12. So we could go ahead and we could fit that into a 12 inch block. All right, so we're going to head over to the machine now. We're going to be set up on our, with our um, ruler foot, which is also buried under the quilt. So the ruler foot, uh, in the case of a Bernina, is a 72 foot. The key thing being that we have that high edge. Don't just go ahead and grab your free motion foot. It has to be a foot specifically designed for ruler work. So we'll pop that on and we will drop our feed dogs and we will be all set. So we'll drop our feed dogs. and slide our quilt up underneath. Now, one of the great things about ruler work, because you are not using feed dogs, uh, you don't have to follow the, the quilt from the center rule as much. I do tend to start, like when I started at the rows at the top, I started in the middle blocks and I worked outward towards the outside edges of the quilt. But, you know, we've been taught with free motion that we should be right in the middle of the quilt. And it might just be more convenient to kind of get yourself anchored along the edges and work your way down the quilt. So we're going to find our pillbox. And so the pillbox you'll see has a slit on the side, which allows us to get in and out. Um, and then it has our pillbox shape. And one of the reasons why I love the pillbox so much is because it kind of morphs uh, an angular section of a ruler and also gives us a curve. And this quilt is definitely angular, so I wanted to add a little bit of curve to it uh, to give it a, soften the, the, um, the ge geometry of it. So we're going to go ahead, we're going to slide into where we chalked. I've got some safety pins holding my quilt together, so I definitely need to get rid of the one in the center. And I'm going to get rid of the one at the front of the block and the one at the back of the block. First thing we need to do, whatever free motion we're doing, we're going to come in and we're going to pull up our bobbin thread. So at the intersection of our block, I'm going to come in, I'm going to sink my needle, I'm going to do one stitch, and I'm going to pull up on my bobbin thread. So we now have that on the top of the quilt. I'm going to do just a couple of stitches, nothing extraordinary. Uh, and then I'm going to trim my threads. And once again, I'm not going to trim my threads all the way down to the fabric. I'm just trying to get these long threads out of the way so that they're not going to be underneath my ruler as I'm stitching. So I can now take and raise up my foot. I can now slide my ruler in because I have that opening on the side. So it'll pass by the thread and the um, needle. And then we'll go ahead and we'll put our presser foot back down again. So we're going to start by lining up the length of the ruler. So the, the top here, we've got a line down the center. And if I look back here, I've got a line at the top here. So I'm going to make sure that those are lined up with my vertical line. We're going to press down on the ruler lightly 
and we're gonna start stitching going around. Now, right now, I could feel right away that I'm caught up. Pam, can you just actually go to that? Do you see how it pulled against the corner of my table and I couldn't move my fabric very well? So we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna get that up at the top. So always, if you feel a drag, go ahead and stop. You can, then if you have needle stop down, that will make it much easier for you. So we're working our way back. I'm gonna need to shift my hands a little bit on the ruler. We're gonna go around the end and we're coming down to the side that's got the join in it. So when you do that for the join, you wanna be a little bit lighter on the press so that you don't kind of indent and give yourself a divot. And we'll come all the way back around Pull up some of the weight of the quilt here. And we're back to our center. So at this point, we can shift some fabric weight. We're not gonna shift the quilt, so I don't need to rewrap this or anything. I can leave that all the way it is. And I'm simply gonna take it and I'm gonna bring the ruler forward and I'm gonna line up the line at the back and the line at the front. So right down the center. And so we'll come along and we'll quilt our next section. So we'll come in. Pause if you feel the weight going. To the center. So we've done the north one and the south one. So now what we're going to do is we're going to remove the pins on the side section. So I only have one over here on the side and we're going to shift our ruler and we're going to now move and we're going to go to the side section. So we'll come in Work our way down. We'll pause for a second. I could feel my ruler shifting a little bit. So when I'm coming in and I'm shifting it, I'm gonna go ahead and reline it back up. Because you always have that reference line going at the end of the pillbox. And we're back to our center and we've got that one done. Now we're gonna come in and we're gonna do this. Now you can see I'm gonna have a problem here, right? My ruler is gonna be kinda of covered a little bit with fabric. So it won't be a problem when I get here cause we're moving this direction. So I'm just gonna kinda of get my hand underneath the quilt And we're gonna work our way and do you see how it rolls out so we can come in and we're working our way back so now I have to pause and roll that little guy back up again back around to the center. So we're looking good here. All right, so now we're gonna start doing our diagonals. Now, as I'm sewing along, I'm noticing that I am getting a little bit of slippage. And this will happen to you. Um, 
when I was originally doing designs, I was working on a little bit deeper throated machines. So I didn't have as much fabric coming in here. But you know, this is, everybody can do ruler work no matter what size throated machines you have. If you feel that your ruler is slipping on top of the quilt, pause and add a little bit more handy grip. There is no law that says that you can only put so much handy grip on your ruler. So I'm going to pause and I'm going to take some of the handy grip off of this ruler, put it onto that. I don't usually strip handy grip, grip off of rulers and put them onto other ones. I just get some more handy grip because they give you so much in a package. But we'll pop that on. We'll see if that makes it ha makes me happier. Remember, you're going to be doing this quilt has got 20 blocks on it. So we want to make this fun. So if it's slipping, go ahead and add a little bit more handy grip to it. All right, so here we go. And we're going to stitch down. Oh, so much better. we're back to the center. I think I'll flip and do this side over here. we're back to the center. Now, at this point, I could go ahead and roll with this, but I had to kind of fuss with that with this machine. So what do you do if your throat space isn't quite big enough? Totally not a problem. This is free motion. You're going to sink your needle. You're going to pick up your presser foot. So leave your needle in to hold your place. And we're just going to rotate the quill once around. So I'm going to flip this around. I'm going to put all my extra sticking over here on the side. So now I have my areas where I'm going to quilt out here on the left hand side where I don't have anything in my throat space. So let's go ahead and put the foot back down and we'll go in and start our next one. Remember, you're probably going to have to shift your hands as you go down. And back to our center again. And one more. back to the center. And Pam, while I have this underneath here, maybe we can show this one. Mm -hmm. So in we, in, in our design, we did eight pillboxes going around the shapes. What is awesome is it creates these secondary patterns. And that's one of the things that I love about doing ruler work is all of these cute little surprises that you get when the, the rulers interlock. Now, when you're looking at the back, here's, here's the thing, you know, ruler work is so much, is so fast to do. You get going 
And I'm going to flip this quilt around on the back because this the, you can uh, see my OCD when I start getting into this. So I am this is what it, the quilting looks like on the back on here. So we've got this great looking piece. Now I could leave it as it is. I'm working with warm and white uh, batting, which I can quilt as far apart as 10 inches. So this area in the corner where the designs overlap, so this was the side of the block and these are the corners of the blocks. I've got this kind of open space here, but it's not anywhere close to being 10 inches. So I could leave it strictly as it is. However, I love to do ruler work. And so I'm looking at this and going, hmm, I own a two and a half inch circle. How cool would it be if I were to add a two and a half inch circle? So let's go ahead and flip over and we'll do one of those. So here's the great thing about the two and a half inch circle and this particular pattern. We're just going to drop a two and a half inch circle right in where this intersection is, right? Uh, my pieces are coming here for the quilting. And all I need to do, the ruler is set up so that we have an open notch. We've got notches on north, south, east, and west. So I just have to drop this in. I don't have to make any marks at all. What I do need to do though, is I need to throw a little bit of handy grip back on this ruler. It was very kind of it to sacrifice its handy grip for my other ruler. So we'll throw a little bit back on there so that we've got enough grip. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna throw this circle in. Now, I don't know where to pull up my thread until I place my ruler in. So I always go ahead and place my ruler. I put my foot down, snug it up right against the notch where you can go past the needle. And I will do one stitch and pull up my bobbin thread right there. So that way I have my bobbin thread pulled up right where I need to start. So we'll pull that bobbin thread up. And then we're going to put the foot back down again. And we're going to do just a couple of stitches just to kind of anchor that in. Go in, trim our tails, get those long tails out of the way. So now we're going to come in on our two and a half. And we're just going to stitch around the two and a half. And I like the two and a half because it, it kind of matches the width of this pillbox. So we do a little tack step. We'll go ahead and take our fabric out. You'll notice that I'm not using my scissor button on my machine for this. Uh, the reason why I don't is oftentimes you're jumping from one t section to the next. So you're always having to pull that bobbin thread up. And if you use your built-in scissors, uh, it will, you'll always have this really short little tuft to pull up. You always feel like you need to get your, um, uh, your serger tweezers out. So you look at the back here by adding that circle in the center. It's just giving a little bit more interest to an area on the quilt that was negative spaced on there. On another quilt that I did the same pillbox pattern on. I think we'll be able to show this. Okay, so there's the same pillbox pattern. When I went to join the center, what I did is I did two individual pillboxes. So I did one here, letting it overlap at the ends, and I did one here to fill in that space. This is two times around the ruler. The circle is one times around the ruler. And so we've got quite a few intersections on this quilt. I tried to go simple on it. The last thing to think about, and actually it's really the first thing to think about when you're doing your ruler work, is 
you always want to do when you're doing ruler work, you always want to have at least some contrast to your thread because you don't want to do all this beautiful ruler work and not have it show up. Like I would never do ruler work with a uh, monofilament thread because you really wouldn't see all the work that you've done. One of my favorite threads to use is a gray thread, this kind of medium gray. Um, this quilt happens to have a lot of gray in it, so it seemed to be a natural choice. But oftentimes, if I'm doing multicolor designs, you know, something that's br really bright, I'll quilt with gray because it's kind of a medium tone. It doesn't, if we had done this in white, when we went over the black, it would like be shockingly white. Um, and yet, if we came over here, the white would disappear on the block. So by choosing the gray in kind of that medium tone, not real light and not real dark, um, it allows your quilting to show up without the, the thread being the star. You really want the design to be the star. So I hope this gives you some interesting uh, ideas for doing uh, ruler work on large blocks. The pillbox certainly isn't the only one that you can do. You could do ovals. Uh, in previous videos, we did some circles, that kind of thing. But the pillbox is exceptional for these large block quilts. So next time, uh, Pam is going to be doing a Kinder Bell in the Hoop project. Um, so hopefully we'll see you next week. Bye.